All right, I'm going to do a quick review of a program that I really, really like. This is uh, Earthquake 3D. There's a free version available online, and uh, that's how I discovered it. Actually, I've been using this since, oh man, probably 2011. And just recently they did a major update um, on this program because uh, the U.S. Geological Survey decided to change some links that prevented the program from getting accurate data. So, uh, yeah, some changes and uh, some other stuff had to be made. But, yeah, I'll do a quick review of it. Um, I like uh, this particular setting with the globe with the topographical uh, maps and it shows earthquakes. I'm going back as far as about five days just so it's not cluttered but you can go much much more you know from like seven eight days out and uh, yeah so I usually try to bring it down to about eh, around five and uh, yeah let me move this camera a little bit and I think I got the edge there Okay, and you got different versions or views of the globe itself. That's more of an enlarged version with the rings of current earthquakes over the last few days. Um, another topographical type map, artificially colored. And the rotation, of course, yeah, go in the wrong direction. This one's uh, showing the southern hemisphere for the most part, the rings and of, of magnitudes of earthquakes and this one's showing the uh, ring of fire so to speak and again earthquakes and magnitudes and the last one is your depth uh, globe which shows the approximate depth or so from I think that's what it is I mean it's going from the center of the earth so it's not really like you know, an actual depth indicator, but it's just, I think it's showing the, uh, representing the um, intensity from the depth that it had uh, originated. So, again, a lot of this I'm still not totally familiar with. I just use the main setting here, which more or less shows the uh, Current earthquakes, which, yeah. Okay, so yeah, like I was saying, it go you know, from current earthquakes and you can span it out to up to, looks like approximately eight days based on the graph. And uh, yeah, I usually like to leave it around the five, five day mark. Magnitude, this is what you want it to display. It can only, it'll only display uh, major earthquakes or it'll display up to basically you know four or five I usually set it at around three you know there's a two so you can see the 2.7s 2.8 there's a lot of those out there so to minimize the clutter I'll just set it to a magnitude three so anything above a 3.0 will be displayed on the map um, different indicators it'll you can show the rings if you want where the earthquakes and approximate you know you know where the vibration is felt um, KRR that's uh, let's see kilometers no that's I'm not exactly sure what the KRR is I'll probably have to do some research on that solar 2A 12P so yeah, some of these settings I'm just not familiar with. I probably should be because you know I do have a geology minor, but uh, yeah, I just don't. Uh, I'm just not familiar with that. Shell, okay, I guess that would be um, how high up in the atmosphere the shock wave, you know, went from the epicenter. Uh, angle, yeah, not really sure. It's not displaying anything and DEX, which I guess it's showing uh, 
Well, not really sure. Just showing lines coming out at certain heights above the globe. So, again, I prefer to just have the magnitudes. So, again, there's not so much clutter on there. Uh, the globe setting. There's Earth A, which is what I've got selected currently. Earth B, which is, again, artificially colored and highlights the lowlands versus highlands and, you know, still has the earthquakes on there. A little bit more difficult to kind of see on on this setting. Earth C, again, there's your false colored uh, globe with the earthquakes. And Earth D, showing the ring of fire around the world. This is the sphere. It's just basically, you know, it's no color at all, just outlining of the continents and states and countries. Uh, nighttime version, which is what it's showing now, just basically a solid black sphere with all the earthquakes. That actually is not too bad because you can see the earthquakes a good bit better than uh, on a regular, you know, daytime scale. And hidden which it basically hides the surface of the earth and just shows the countries um, relative to the earthquakes and you can actually see through it to uh, catch magnitudes on the other side in retrospect to basically the other side of the globe. So I'll put it back on Earth A, more natural looking globe with the earthquakes. And then it's got surface features. Um, I pretty much have everything checked here. Uh, the grid, you know, that basically takes the uh, latitude longitude lines away, but I like to have those just for, again, navigational retrospect. Uh, outline basically is showing the outline of uh, the countries versus its natural borders. Islands, there's islands that will display, some will you know, be kind of submerged, I guess, or the, basically the outlines are kind of uh, not clearly marked. Lakes, you know, display lakes on the countries, the outlines of them, or the natural uh, layout of the lake itself. Rivers, it'll add the rivers, the topographical rivers, um, you know, where they are on each country, and borders. You can take all the borders away from each country and uh, it'll leave you with just the rivers and the natural layout of the continents. So, yeah, it's a pretty unique setup. Um, I like to save the current view. It's got that option. You can check the beep if you want it to make a sound and uh, so it'll alert you. And I have it checking every minute. Um, there's a scale where you can you know, basically have it never checked, just let it run. Don't know why that would even be an option, but it'll check to approximately every two hours, hour and a half, one hour, 30 minutes to one minute. I usually like to leave it on a minute just because, you know, sometimes things are happening pretty quick out there. Uh, then, of course, it's got your options for your source data, you know, where, uh, where it's getting its information. Last hour from the USGS, uh, a 24-hour span seven days which is what I prefer to use uh, 30 days out you can select that if you want to have uh, you know basically showing 4.5 magnitudes or higher and uh, then there's the European uh, version the EMSC showing the last 50 uh, I guess uh, days from the Europe's European scale or there's a custom scale and you can locate it if you if you've got something different you like to use uh, the options. This is Earth image. If you want to use an external Earth image uh, to put the earthquakes on, it gives you that option. You can locate the image if you have one. Download the images when you're ready. I prefer using the high resolution Earth. Um, beep using magnitude filters. It already does that, so I don't need to select it again. And you can disable the depth testing, which eh, I don't really use anyway. So, uh, so there's those options. Then it's got a, a link that'll take you right to the USGS website. And you can click on the maps, the information, the European Mediterranean Seismology Center. So it's got the different links there. And 
It's got a little help option if uh, you're a little if you want to know how to use the mouse to spin, the tilt, the zoom of the of the globe, and the different keys you can push, um, identify you know cursor over the quake, you know flag and click right, the right click button, um, and let's see let's see the desktop 24 32 bit color is required, which yeah that's pretty much a given. I'm using Windows 7 with this, so that's a natural setting. Uh, flag size, it's got the keys, the different number keys, the zoom, Z in, X out, the tilt would be the U or the D letters, spin keys would be, you know, spinning left, right, uh, I guess horizontal, not sure what F is, or uh, S maybe stationary. Um, and the version I'm currently using is 4.01. I originally had 3.8. I think when I got this, I had, uh, oh man, 2011, I had it back to, you know, two point something and it upgraded to 3.8 until just, I think it was July, uh, yeah, June 1st. So three days ago when the USGS decided to make some changes to their website and the EQ3D program could not access the earthquake data any longer. So, yeah, the uh, designers had to go back and redo. Uh, some stuff to allow it to access the, you know, USGS website. So, yep, version 4.0 is uh, the versions that will work. Anything underneath that will not access the uh, USGS website any longer, from what I gather. So, I think yeah, that's pretty much a rundown on the Earthquake 3D program. I'll put a link in the uh, description there of... Uh, where to get it, you know, for those interested. Um, there is the free version. You can check it out. That's what I used for a couple of years and until I decided to buy the full-fledged enhanced version, which is $20. Um, and you get unlimited uh, license uh, upgrades and stuff like that. And in this case, I had to send, you know, because it was such a long time ago, I had to send my PayPal information when I originally purchased the uh, program so that way I could get the 4.0 version update on it. So, yep, there you go. Um, this is the Earthquake 3D program. And for those interested, like I said, I will put a link down there in the prescription, description, whatever. And, uh, you know, you can test it out for yourself and uh, see what you think. So, hope you enjoy it. And... Thanks for watching.